Welcome back to Digital Trends Live. Thanks for joining us. It is a huge day in space exploration. The Mars InSight lander is going to be hitting the atmosphere of Mars, hopefully, uh, very soon and within a couple of hours here. Uh, I'm Greg Nibbler, here joined by Drew Prindle. How's it going? Drew, thanks for joining us. And I don't want to waste any time. I want to bring in our star guest right now. So he's on via Skype. And what I am sure is a very, very busy day, we have former astronaut Mike Massimino. Hello, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to uh, be here with you guys. Thanks for having me. Um, I want to say, well, I'm curious where you're heading right now. It's probably somewhere important that you can't even tell us what it is. Uh, but um, as yeah, you're... Top, 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 secret, top secret space stuff. Top secret stuff. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually headed uh, to New York City. The NASA's having a bit of an event uh, for the landing at Times Square. And then we're going to go uh, to NASDAQ and uh, ring the final bell. So the NASA was uh, NASA, NASA, NASDAQ <laughs> and uh, NASA were nice enough to invite me. So that's where I'm headed. That is very exciting. Well, let's talk about this because I know your time is precious today. Um, why don't we walk through just uh, maybe give your explanation of what the InSight landing is for anybody who needs to be caught up to date. And then I've got some specific questions that I want to ask from there. Okay, yeah, I, I lost you for a minute, but I got you back now. Okay, um, why don't you walk us through what the InSight landing is? Oh, okay, we're having just a little bit of problem there. Uh, so I'll wait until we know if Mike can hear us again. Okay, so uh, just talking about the InSight. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you right now if you can hear us. So, we're, you know, we're obviously dealing with uh, Mike's on the go right now, huge day. So just talking about the InSight landing, you know, this lander is heading to the Martian atmosphere. It's going to be, I guess the, the bottom line is, you know, I wanna talk about what the goals are with this, but it seems like there's so many things that can go wrong with doing something like this. What needs to happen for this to go right? Well, first off, uh, hopefully it'll have good communication, unlike what we're showing right now between you and I. But, uh, <laughs> So uh, now the the, uh, the spacecraft is a long way away. You know, Mars is very far away. It's taken it uh, months to get there, and now today is the day where it actually uh, enters the atmosphere. And a series of technological miracles have to occur uh, for it to enter the atmosphere correctly, a parachute to deploy, retro rockets to fire, and for it to land successfully on the surface. And so you know your chances uh, of of success are hopefully pretty good, but, you know, there still is a very significant chance that it might not happen. It's, a, it's an autonomous spacecraft. Everything has to work automatically. Um, they're not going to be in communication with the spacecraft uh, to be able to control it directly because of the long distance. So they have to hope that all these things happen um, like they have planned, uh, the series of things that have to happen, such as a parachute, retro rockets, landing uh, and coming into the atmosphere and so on. All that has to happen correctly so that the spacecraft will survive and not crash and, and reach the surface uh, successfully. I think there's a pretty good chance that that's going to happen. I think that will happen, and hopefully that, that'll be the, uh, the outcome this afternoon. So, question for you. If there's anything that is going to fail, what do you think is the most likely thing that could go wrong? Well, I think uh, throughout the... Throughout the entry, uh, things have to be timed correctly, and the atmosphere has to be picked up correctly. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, I think things like the parachute being deployed at the right time, the retro rockets firing at the right time, I think that whole sequence of things is probably the most risky. All right, we lost a little bit of you during that one but we're gonna we're gonna keep on going on here so yeah again it's hilarious okay. that it, i think it's i think it's ironic that we can send this lander to mars and the technology <laughs> but we, we can't do this yeah but we can talk to mike in new york um but at the same time though uh, just walking through uh, talking about this um i i do think uh, talking about how we're going to see this broadcast like maybe we should talk about that for just a second of watching everybody you know the entire team as they're as they're going through this this years and years and years of effort. I mean, this is what a decade in the planning. They were supposed to launch two years ago. There was an issue, and now we're to this point. And then it'll come down to that seven minutes of terror. And 
Um, what is it like being on that team? I mean, uh, what is it like for, for the team members at NASA uh, seeing something like this culminate? Like, what's the feeling like for people at NASA? Well, I've, I've, I've never been on, a, on that team. I mean, I've been on the NASA team, of course, but... I guess that's what I meant. With, ...with sending, sending people places. So, uh, as a, you know, but it's still, it's always that unknown. Every time you're dealing with... Uh, with a launch um, and, or with an entry or with anything in space, you know, there was a, there's a high risk involved. And, um, but it's challenging and, and then the big day comes where you're going to know whether or not it successfully, um, it successfully makes it. And so today's a very exciting day for them. So it's, I think it's probably a, kind of a mix of stress and, excitement and anticipation, but, uh, yeah. Oh. Right. Going from there. Um, and, and as you're cutting out, I just, I want to ask another question too. So I, I do watch your show, uh, the planets, oh, as we get uh, caught back up there, I watch your show, the planets and beyond on science channel. It's a great show. There was a clip where you were right. talking about, um, being on the Hubble Space Telescope, and there was something you were fixing a panel, I believe it was, and you accidentally stripped a screw, which, you know, not, never planned. And the way that you guys ended up fixing it is you talked to the ground engineers. The ground engineers basically came back to you and said, rip off the panel door. And that was the solution, you know, the, this engineering solution. But when you have something like this with an autonomous ship, obviously there's not a person up there that can make those decisions. Are they able to make changes on the fly with this kind of technology? Or is that something that is just not possible? You, you set it out there and then that's it. You can't make those changes. Uh, well, yeah, they can, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's some changes they can make, but I think that that's, Part of the difficulty when you have uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, spacecraft where people aren't there uh, to improvise, uh, sometimes there, there's issues, and and so it limits what you can do. For example, the Mars rover um, has uh, has when it when it was when it's been exploring, it had to move extremely slowly because if it would encounter uh, something that was unknown or unforeseen, uh, they wouldn't be able to easily fix it. For example, they had one of the previous rovers on Mars was stuck and probably just needed a little shove, but there's no one there to give it a little push. And so that's, that was game over for that, for that uh, vehicle years back. Um, so I think it does limit what you can do. And certainly there are things they can do, but not as much as you can do if you have a person on site. I think that's a good point. Just talking about the future of space travel, you know, with the advancement of AI and robotics, it seems like there's more and more things that it can do maybe some of it more efficiently than humans, but some of it, can't. What are your thoughts on that as far as the roles of humans in space going forward? Well, I think as far as AI and robotics go, as they get better and better, I think that they'll be able to do more and more. And we still uh, like to have people on the spot as as we just said a minute ago, to, to improvise and to make decisions and to interact with whatever needs to be done. Um, you don't have that sort of flexibility yet with the robotics, but eventually someday we will. But I think it's only just a changing role. And I think, we, for example, with going from the space shuttle to where we are with the space station, the space shuttle was a very much a, a manually controlled vehicle where they had to do just about everything for that, that station. Um, with the space station, most of it is done from the ground. A lot of it is autonomous. And so as technology improves, as we improve with AI and with robotics, I think it'll just make things better. And astronauts will be able to can, uh, concentrate on other things, um, like the things that people are good at, like ex exploring, maybe doing some of the experiments, and doing things that uh, people are, are good at. And the more that we can hand over, I think, the robotics and autonomy, I think the better off we're going to be, and it's always going to be a role for people. I think that's interesting, the symbiotic relationship, you know, and, and looking at it from that aspect. I mean, it's not... It's not something that's going to you know, take away that human aspect of exploration, but actually combine the two. Totally. Um, with that, you know, I, since, yeah, I, think it'll, I think it'll enhance it. Yeah. Enhance it. I yeah. It's important to embrace the technology. Don't be scared. Yeah. I think we feel that same way here at Digital Trends. 
Um, a couple other questions too, just to just to get to you. Just talking about this, you know, with the future of space exploration. You know, we're sending landers to Mars, but obviously there's the goal to eventually send a person to Mars. So I want to ask you: Would you go on the Mars trip? Uh, maybe, but I, I'm really doubtful they're going to ask me. <laughs> I, I think Mars mission is, is really a long way off still, so and we, we can we can uh, you know pretend that it's happening soon, but it probably isn't. Um, it's, it's been, you know, it's been 10 to 15, 20 years off for the past 40 years. And, and these 10, 15 years go by and we're still 10 to 15 years away from it. I, I think it's still going to be a while before we're able to send people there. We have not sent people beyond orbit since we're in 1972 that we're out with the, with the onset of the, um, commercial companies now contributing uh, on their own, their privatization of space, and I think that uh, what's going to be done in lower orbit, I think we're also going to be exploring beyond that. Uh, that oh. turn into we lost you. Now, uh, to certainly anytime soon, uh, but hopefully we can do things like uh, get to the moon, for example, and and, and put a, uh, an outpost there, a, a science uh, settlement there, uh, learn how to live on a planetary surface. Uh, and then from there, I think, I think the Mars is going to be a little more accessible to us. I think we'll eventually get there, but I think it's, uh, it's going to be a while. Do you think, and, and you may have said this and it just cut out, because I'm pretty sure you're broadcasting from Mars right now secretly, but um, is yeah, it... seems like it. Is, uh, do you think it's more likely that it'll be a private interest that sets up something like a moon base, you know, something like a Blue Origin or a SpaceX or whoever comes along, or will it be a, a country funded like NASA that would do that first? Who do you think is going to get there first? I, I actually think it's going to be a combination. I think that uh, there are interests that uh, private, in, private companies could have on the moon, uh, such as mining resources or tourism. And I also think that there are interests uh, in the area of technology and exploration and research that, uh, that, countries would have interest in and not just the United States but countries around the world so I, I think that the, the way it's going to happen I, mean, I don't know I wish I you know if I really do but there is some I uh, missed it but what I would expect is that it's going to be some sort of I think that you could combine what governments do well and what private companies are, have been able to do uh, do well, I, I think that would. I think it's going to be a team effort. I don't think. I think it's a big enough project where trying to do it going alone might be a little bit too tough, right now anyway. Right. Yeah, and that's. Uh, I. I think that's a, a great way to look at it because I think at this point we do kind of need everybody contributing to make sure it happens. Uh, Drew, did you have any final questions here before we? Um, so let's say the, uh, this, this landing goes right and we make it to the Martian surface. What mm -hmm. happens after that? What's the next thing this lander does? Yeah, uh, yeah that would be cool. Uh, the, uh, the land, it is not a rover. Uh, what we've had in the past, like with the current rover, is, is something that moves around the planet. That's not going to happen. What this is going to be is a stationary probe, but it's going to look underneath the surface, much further underneath the surface, surface and study the surface of Mars more than any other spacecraft has before. So I think what's going to be interesting here is we're going to find out what's underneath the surface, what, what is going to be, it's going to have a seismograph on it, so it's going to study the planet itself, and it can do that from just about any location. So we're going to learn a lot about the composition of Mars, and I think we can use that information, compare it to where, uh, what we know about our planet, um, to see the differences and maybe make some conclusions about how our planet evolved as well. So I think we'll learn a lot about Mars, and I think Looking forward, uh, there may be signs of life on Mars, maybe at the microbial level, underneath the surface. Uh, that, this is not a, a probe that's going to be looking for life or signs of life from a long time ago or anything like that. But we may be able to learn something about how life um, came to be on this planet and how it, it isn't. It did not flourish on Mars, for example, but it did flourish on Earth. And maybe we'll find eventually find out some of the answers to those big questions as well. So... I think and there may be other questions that will be developed that we can't even imagine. I think you go into something like this with a new spacecraft, similar like they did with the Hubble Space Telescope, that they knew there were things they wanted to investigate. Um, like in the, in the case of Hubble, they 
They wanted to find see if they could find planets in other solar systems and the existence of black holes. And they, they were able to do those things. They, they wanted to look for those things. And they found the problem. But then they found things that they never could have imagined. It's just going to be this nice path. It'll be all on the surface. You can bring to the questions that they're asking, but I think it might also uh, really surprise us with what it learns. Uh, things that we may couldn't even imagine might might uh, might be found. Well, we'll see. Well, that's part of the excitement about this, just space exploration in general. I'm always intrigued anytime there's something new going on. Same and here. and with the insight landing again, you know, you can you can watch this, you can watch the broadcast. Uh, I love how this is open for everybody to take a look at. And Mike, I want to thank you so much for hopping on our show too. <laughs> yeah. um, you, you bet. Know, it's Astro underscore Mike on Twitter. I believe the first person to tweet from space uh, is, is one that of your... That was me. That was you? So, <laughs> yep. so there you go. I mean, there's, uh, you've got no other reason not to follow. So Astro underscore Mike. Uh, Mike Massimino, thank you so much for taking time out of your really busy day to hop on here for Digital Trends thanks, Live. Thanks. thanks, guys. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Hopefully it'll go a little bit better for the Mars probe today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Mike, thanks right, a lot. Guys.